In this video, I want to talk about semi-direct products of groups, and in particular, I want to motivate, like, where do they come from? Because the first time you see the operation on a semi-direct group, you might think, like, how could anyone ever think of this? So the reason why we study semi-direct products, it's because it's a generalization of direct products. And direct products, it's a very nice way of constructing a new group from two old groups. A direct product of two groups, H and K, is the direct product as sets, so pairs of an element in H with an element in K, and we put a binary operation on those by com multiplying elements component-wise. So if I have two pairs like this, then I would multiply H with H prime to get my left component, and I will multiply K with K prime to get my right-hand side component. Easy peasy. Moreover, if G is the direct product of two groups H and K, then there are subgroups inside of G that are isomorphic to H, namely H direct product with identity in K, and a subgroup that is isomorphic to K, namely the identity in H direct product with K. And moreover, every element in G can be written as an element in H times an element in K. So there is a canonical decomposition of elements of G as a something in H and something in K. Moreover, the elements in H and the elements in K within G, within the direct product, commute, as I wrote above. And that means that if I have to multiply two elements in G, every element in G will be an H times K, every element in G prime will be some H prime K prime, and when I multiply them together, since the elements, uh, the H's and the K's commute, I just have to bring this H to this side, and now I have an element of H and an element of K, and this will be my new element that is the product of those two elements. So what happens in general if I have a group G that can be written as H times K, that every element in G is an element of H times an element of K, um, is that a direct product? So, for example, Sn can be written as H times K, where H is the alternating subgroup, and K is the group of order 2 generated by that transposition 1, 2. Um, is this a direct product of H and K? Well, it is not, because the elements of An A -N and the elements of K do not commute, but how close are we to being a direct product? To fix ideas, let's work with S3, which is the product of A3 times uh, the subgroup generated by 1, 2. And you can see I've written here some of the elements in S3 written as something in H times something in K. So you see in S3, we do have that every element of S3 can be written as an element in H times an element in K. However, the elements in H and the elements in K do not commute like they do in a direct product. The element 1, 2, 3 and the element 1, 2 do not commute, so that doesn't happen in general. And moreover, uh, if I write an element G as HK, I write an element G prime as H prime K prime, the product of the two elements is not just H H prime times K K prime. However, if I have a G and G prime written as HK and H prime K prime, what I can do is multiply after H prime by K inverse times K, and then you see, I can rewrite this as H times K H prime K inverse and times K K prime. So that K K prime looks like before. And in here, instead of multiplying by H prime, I'm multiplying by a conjugate of H prime. And since H, the alternating group, is normal in S3, it turns out that this element is in H. So I do have something in H times something in K, and I have rewritten this product as something in H times something in K. So there is hope there. So rephrasing what I just said, in S3, when I multiply G and G prime, so when I multiply something of the form HK times something of the form H prime K prime, I can't just move the H prime to the other side of K. However, I can do that at the price of twisting of conjugating H prime. So what I get is that H K times H prime K prime is H times a conjugate of H prime given by this formula times K K prime. And this formula is what we're going to generalize to define semi-direct products and it's something that works in general. So in general we define a semi-direct product of H and K 
twisted by these homomorphism from K2 automorphisms of H, that conjugation that we were doing in S3 is an automorphism of the alternating group. So we're replacing that by just any automorphism that goes from elements of K to automorphisms of H with the binary operation on H semi-direct product K given by the product of two elements is, well, the Ks just multiply like they do in the direct product and the Hs multiply, uh, but with a twisted version of H prime, so that we replace H prime by the uh, effect that automorphism has on H prime, which in this case, in the case of uh, S3, was just conjugation. And like so, S3 is a semi-direct product like we have defined.